Hello, hello. I'm Ingrid Pika, and we're here with Business as Unusual. We know we've got so many changes going on with all the global crises, and um, many people are scared. What do we do now? How do we address what the, the changes are in our business and the businesses that we're working with? And this series is designed specifically to allow each of us to have opportunities to share wisdom and learn from each other and to provide you with great tips and opportunities that you can apply to your business right now. So I'm very honored to have two special guests on today. Uh, these are two individuals that I'm working with on projects as well. I have found them to be highly resourceful in the, and great in helping me moving my presence on board as I'm revamping my own website. And that is specifically a topic that I wanted to choose today is the website. As our economy, as our businesses are translating into the online world, we are so, seeing some changes that we probably need to be addressing sooner versus later and maybe looking at it proactively. And then also if there are some things on your websites that need to be addressed now, let's talk about that today. So I'd like to take a quick moment to welcome my two guests and have them provide a quick, just at least introduction of who they are and what they do. We'll start with you, Jay. Hi, I'm Jay Phelps. I run a company called Duke Mango and that means creative dude. It's D-U-T-E-M-A-N-G-O. Um, I've been freelancing for the last five to six years, but I've been in the business for a really long time with working in corporate, corporate America and nonprofits and small businesses. And my goal is, is that I like people to know that I like to design and I like to create and I really love to inspire others and have others inspire me in the work that I do and, uh, and connect. So I appreciate this opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. Christina. Hi, I'm Christina Tyree. I am a business coordinator and virtual assistant with VBS Virtual. Um, we are a small business woman owned company and we provide administrative services to professionals in all industries. Um, we have a very talented team of virtual assistants, and we provide um, basic administrative services, social media services. We help with everything from calendar management, email management, um, anything you can really think of. We wear all of the hats. Um, so I have been had the pleasure to work with Jay in building Ingrid's website and also to um, support Ingrid administratively as well. Wonderful. And so let's go ahead and dive deep into this. Um, and, and I want to have expertise that both of you have found in the past and what you're seeing now and the transitions that we're finding as well. Um, so with the current global crisis, as, as, as it impacts our economy and also the way we do our business, what do you see changing most significantly in the line of either our, our websites or how we're doing the business connecting to the websites online? Well, I'd like to say that I see changing. There's going to be more communication to the consumers through social media. I see that uh, the businesses are going to have to start, and they have been doing that, um, following the customer more. Um, you, know, you see celebrities when social media started up as a big thing, they, they found the, the idea that they can follow the customer now. They can follow their fans instead of their fans having to follow them. And I see more people working from home, obviously. Absolutely. I think the biggest change, and I think it's pretty obvious, is everybody's having to move virtually and trying to figure out how to conduct business virtually. Um, everything has been, I mean, there's disruption in the supply chain, disruption in major events, disruption in large tech. So, I mean, if you look for, for example, a lot of the restaurants are shutting down. They're having to figure out how to go online with their websites, offer takeout options, figure out how to offer delivery. People who run major events are having to figure out how to do teleconferencing with their, their attendees, healthcare providers learning how to do telehealth. And then like Jay said, learning how to really connect with people via social media. I think that's been one of the major factors of people staying in communication with their customers. 
And then I think for businesses that are already online, they're trying to figure out what to do next. A lot of companies have been operating that way for a very long time, but I've seen a lot of people either scaling back or stopping their business operations. When I think what they really need to be doing is figuring out which platforms serve them best and to be doing more now than ever, whether it's figuring out how to continue to serve their current customer base, to find new customers, um, or find the platforms that serve them the best and how they will going forward with all of the uncertainty. That's really good advice from the two of you. So at this time, what do you feel, what should the average small business be focusing on in, let's, let's use as an example right now, and focus on the website. What transitions or what is most important for the website uh, that, a, that a business owner should consider at this time? Go ahead, Christina. I think the most important thing would be to figure out exactly what features or what kind of website will serve you best. There's so much, like a ton of technology out there, so many tools, so many features, whether you need to create a checkout feature on your website, an interactive forum for people to come together and, and engage with each other, um, a membership platform if you want to start bringing people together to move everything online. So I think it's just small businesses or any business realizing how a website can actually help them. It can help them grow their business. It can help them market themselves, gain a competitive advantage with everyone else. I think a lot of people believe that people are not out spending money. However, there are so many people out there who want to serve and support small businesses at this time. So I think they really need to take that and use that to their advantage. And obviously while staying sensitive to what's going on right now as well. I think that businesses can still continue to tell their story. I mean, I think we're all hopeful that this pandemic is going to ease up soon and we will get back to business. And it would be a shame if small businesses were left out or they remove themselves from online marketing and remove themselves from another marketing channel that is available to them right now. Agreed on that. As I'm working with clients, even at this point in time, um, the, the biggest challenge that I think business owners are finding, and this may not even just a solopreneur, this is also for the other larger, small, smaller business. And we define small business as less than 500 employees, which uh, the, the biggest thing to consider is that we have to stop for a moment and not stop the economy, but stop and look at what our personal goals are for that business. What's the mission that we're supposed to do? And what do we have to offer to our clientele? And as I see what you said, Jay, on, on, on really uh, keeping moving forward instead of stopping, and Christina, when you're saying, you know, adjusting to the new uh, online factor, a business at this point, it's critical for that business to establish what they can still provide on an online basis. For example, this business's unusual series didn't even transpire until all of this. And I realized this is what we needed to do. So my recommendation at this time for all of you business owners, managers, marketing strategists, any of that, is to step back for just a moment and really clearly define what is the outcome you want and hunking it, chunking it down so much. It's not even, yes, I want more clients. I want more revenue. That's way too basic. Which revenue can you increase? And as you define that one streamline of revenue, it allows you, as Christina was saying, is developing that message so that you can connect with the J's and the Christina's out there and make your website more effective to your single purpose, whether it be a revenue base for one particular product, whether it be for a special that you're offering, whether it be something that you're giving to the community, um, or, or whether it's just, hey, I want to capture more leads and more contacts and, and, and bolster my contact list. Those are all very specific purposes that you can align and use these websites and use these online promoters and, and people that can help you streamline it. So, okay, sorry, had to get out of my soapbox on that one for just a minute there. So um, what do you think at this point, 
and this may be, this I think really attributes to both of you, what do you think are some of the biggest mistakes that business owners are doing right now, either on their websites or any of their online presence? Now, there's some funny stories here, I'm sure okay. too, but what are some of the biggest mistakes that you could see them doing now? For me, I see there's, there's just too much. And the websites uh, with small businesses mostly are too confusing. You know, Microsoft did a study on human behavior. I think we've heard this, that the average attention span of a human is eight seconds, right? You've heard that. But the average attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. So we have eight seconds to catch attention. And so sometimes websites are trying too much. Um, so they don't need to um, exclusively focus on 100% of all our products and services. Um, and don't forget to personalize, you know, share solutions, share stories of things that you have done as a small business to solve someone's problem or solution. Um, indicate some pain points that you're able to um, solve for the consumer. I agree, I agree. I think one of the biggest things, at least from my standpoint, um, is not like Jay said, not really thinking about the end user. You really have to think of it from their point of view. I think the biggest pain point for me when visiting a website is it's not easy to navigate or it doesn't keep my attention. And so I get distracted or if it's not easy to use, like Jay said, if there's too much going on and I can't find what I'm looking for, most of the time you will get off of the, the website and you won't go back. Um, so I think that's really important. I also think having a clear call to action is important as well. Like, what do you, what, what is your goal when you have a customer or client come to your website? Is it to give them a resource if you want them to purchase something from you? So just really keeping that in mind so that they know where to navigate and where you want them to go. And then another thing is making it hard to find a way to contact you. I think it's really important to have your social media clearly available on where they can find you. Um, even if it's having it at the bottom of every page or a contact us page so that they're able to reach out because you want to make those connections. Valuable tips on anyone. And as you watch this webinar, and I would encourage you to watch it again and pause, write down each of the tips that you're hearing from the, the, the notes that are being shared with you saying, oh, you know what? I need to get my message in place. Oh, call to action, as Christina just said. I need to get that call to action. What is my call to action? And Jay talked about, there's too much on the website. Okay, look at your website. What can you get rid of? So each, there are so many action steps just in these few minutes of our, our webinar here today. Take advantage of it and take it to heart. You'll make a big difference. So that being said on those, Jay, Christina, what would you say would be the one biggest recommendation you would have for business owners at this time for their website slash online presence? I'd say don't forget to communicate. Don't give up. Don't stop. Um, you, uh, you said one. Another thing, it's a great time for you to, to look at your content and update. There's a lot of websites out there from small businesses that are out of date. That's something simple that can be done right now. I agree. And that's what they came up with Christina, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's really important is for people to just really take a step back, like you said, look at the technology available to them and just really try to understand how it can serve them and what their capabilities are. Because I'm constantly learning how websites work, what you can do with them. Just, you know, like the checkout feature, I learned you can do membership features, you can do forum features. So I think it's just really taking a bit, looking at the big picture, seeing what's available to you, then picking and choosing to see what serves you and what your goals are. Lots to do and lots to remember. So this is your chance to get things done because this right now is business as unusual. Jay, how could someone get a hold of you if they want some help in redesigning and updating their website? Well, they can contact me on my website. It's dutemango.com, D-U-T-E-M-A-N-G-O.com. Go to the contact form, send me a note, and I'd be happy to discuss ideas and listen to um, your projects and the things that you're interested in. 
Cool. And Christina, if somebody wants some help on their flow and they're kind of stuck in getting even some content done, how can they reach you? Um, bbsvirtual.com is the website to go to. Um, you can learn more about the services that we offer, learn a little bit more about our team. Um, you can also reach me directly. Email is the easiest. My email is Christina, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A dot T-Y-R-E-R -E at gmail.com. And I'm happy to answer any questions and connect you with the right people to see how we can serve you. Fantastic. Want you to go on business as unusual. If you would like to reach me and have you help you in fine tune and getting your next steps unstuck, please contact me. My website is www.ingridpika.com. That's I N G R I D P is in penguin, Y K A.com. And you'll see some of the great revisions coming soon with Jay and Christina's assistance. Uh, or you're more than welcome to email me directly at with ingrid at ingridpika.com. So business is unusual. Yes, we can. We know we can. So thanks for joining us. Join us next time for another episode of Business as Unusual.